Hi students, welcome back to the physics class and uh, today we are going to discuss electrostatics. Electromagnetism is an important branch of physics which has mainly two parts. One is electrostatics and the second electrodynamics. As the name itself says here, statics, dynamics. So this branch of physics, this part of electromagnetism deals with static charges whereas this part of electromagnetism called as electrodynamics deals with moving charges. And static charges in this part, we are going to learn like uh, what is the charge and uh, what are the characteristics of charges, how to charge a body, how to add a charge to the body, methods of charging body power. And then there is something called electric field, electric field, potential, capacitors, etc. All these things you are going to study in this part. Whereas, in this part, you are going to study current electricity, then electromagnetic induction, magnetism, right, AC currents, etc. All these things you are going to study in moving charges. So, to start with, let us go to electrostatics. As I said, this deals with static charges. Static means stationary. Rest. So charges at rest. Let me just remove this. So today's discussion we will restrict ourselves to electron. Statics, and in this, the first chapter we have here that is electric charges and fields. So, electric charge is a basic characteristic, you can say, it is an intrinsic property of a body. So, what is exactly a mass? There is no proper definition for that. Means mass is mass. That is a very basic fundamental characteristic of a body, we can say. That is, it's an intrinsic characteristic of a body. Just like mass, charge is also an intrinsic characteristic. Means you cannot actually define what is a charge. It is just an intrinsic property. Means that is the property a body has, and you can experience the effects of the existence of existence of the charge. But you cannot actually define what is a charge, what is it consisting of. You cannot define that. And a charge can exist only on a mass. Means without mass, charges cannot exist. And but of course, the vice versa is not applicable. That is, mass can exist without charge, but charge cannot exist without mass. Now, let us understand understand some basic differences between charge and mass. Say charge mass now you know charges are of two types they are of two types that is positive and negative whereas mass is only one type there is nothing like negative mass right you know uh, half a kg one kg two kg hundred grams whatever mass whereas uh, milligrams of course also micrograms also you may be like so whatever so that is positive mass but you don't have a negative mass like minus 1 kg minus 2 kg no it is not possible so one, one of the characteristics is this one of the differences is this charges are of two types but mass is of only one type now this can't exist 
without mass. This is another characteristic. But but this can exist without charge. So charge cannot exist with, with without mass, whereas mass can exist without charge. Means charges sit on the mass. So whenever you move a charge from one place to another, it means that you are also moving the mass with it. So without mass, charges cannot exist. Now another important characteristic is uh, the mass. Mass of a body, say any object, uh, has uh, something called rest mass and the actual mass. That is, mass of the body is equal to its rest mass divided by root of 1 minus v square by c square. There is a relativistic mass what you call. Means, mass of a body depends on speed. That is, mass depends on speed. Now, you can understand from this that if Say for example, uh, an object has yourself, if you just consider yourself, say you are 50 kgs now, right? So your rest mass is 50 kgs, means when you are not moving, you are 50 kgs, okay? Now if you start moving, say for example, we are, you are moving with some velocity, with, with some speed, say maybe 10 km per hour, 20 km, 50 km per hour or whatever, maybe in a vehicle you are moving or whatever, something like that. So that speed is V. And what is C here? This is the speed of light, which is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meters per second. Of course, that's a very large quantity. Now, V is smaller than C. So, we can understand that V square by C square is smaller than 1. Now, 1 minus smaller than 1. That is, of course, the whole thing is smaller than 1. Root of that is also smaller than 1. Now, denominator is smaller than 1. Then you can understand that the whole quantity is increased. Means, M is more than M naught. So, what did you understand from this? So, moving body has more mass compared to stationary mass, stationary body. That is, your mass will be more when you are moving than when you are at rest. It may sound a bit uh, difficult to understand for you, but that's a fact. The reason you don't realize this in daily life is, the V is very, very, very small compared to C here. Because C is the speed of light, 3 into 10 to the power. 8 and V, if you just take it as you know, maybe 50 km per hour, 100 km per hour, if you just calculate this V square by C square, it's almost 0. So when it is almost 0, of course M is almost equal to M0. But just think of the chapter which we are talking about here now. We are talking about charges, that is electrons, protons, etc. And these particles, they are so tiny, their mass is so small, they can move with very high speeds. Now when they travel with very high speeds, may be comparable to the speed of light. Like for example, this is C is equal to 3 to 10 to the power 8 meters per second. Maybe an elephant can move with 10 to the power 7, 10 to the power 6. And maybe uh, a particle may move with speeds almost equal to that of C. So in such cases, this becomes very relevant to your relativistic mass. I mean to say, when V is close to C, then the effect of variation between differences between M and M0 is, can be realized easily. Uh, no, anyways, so this is mass is relativistic. So mass depends on speed. It depends on speed. What about this? It is independent of speed. Means a charge is having some quantity. And that quantity will not change whether it is at rest or it is moving. I mean to say, there is an electron, it has a charge and that charge quantity remains the same whether electron is at rest or electron is moving or with whatever speed it is moving. Independent of the speed we can say. So, charge is independent of speed. So, these are the important characteristics and differences between charge and mass. So, remember, charge cannot exist without mass but mass can exist without charge. So, and charge is of two types, that is positive and negative, like for example, electron and proton. So, electron in your first place itself you have learned, in your 11th standard you have learned. So, positive charge, uh, I mean, electron is negative and proton is positively charged. And whereas mass, there is no kind of negative mass. So, it's only positive mass always. Now, independent of speed, as I said, and this is depending on speed. These are the important differences between charge and mass.
Now, let me just tell you some basic uh, of charge. So as I said, you know, charge is denoted by Q. As you already know, charge is denoted by Q. And uh, the SI unit of charge is Coulomb. So Coulomb is the SI unit of charge. So Coulomb is the SI unit. Then, if you take uh, one electron, so one electron charge is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 Coulomb. Of course, it is negative. If you take the charge on proton, it will be exact same but positive. Electron and proton have opposite charges, you know that. So these are the basic uh, things related to charge. Now, let us try and understand. Of course, fields we will study in the coming sessions. So today we will just restrict ourselves to the basic characteristics of charges.